HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Hello, and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this special edition of HCAM News, you'll view the Gateway Green Ribbon Cutting Ceremony. Gateway Green was a donor-funded project to plant trees, flowers, and plants on the West Main Street median by the 495 exits in Hopkinton. The project was a success and will bring more beautiful scenery to one of the gateways of the town. And now, here is the ceremony to recognize those that helped make Gateway Green happen. Uh, my name is, is Tim Kilduff. I've uh, been a resident of town for a couple of years, involved in the chamber, and I uh, have the privilege of introducing uh, this dedication ceremony. But I want to take I want to take a minute because I don't think the people that have worked on this quite understand that they've created a formula for success. Uh, and I want to I want to go over that. I think that's really important. So somebody had to come up with this idea. To, to beautify the, the green sp the, the space uh, down around 495. And the person that did is, is a person who's had a, a huge impact on, pl on places in town like the Common. Uh, the Common was in disarray several years ago. And thanks to Ken Driscoll's leadership, that's a very, very different place. That's a jewel in the community. So the idea to beautify that particular area was Ken's. Where is Ken? He's right here. So one of the very first things that he did, realizing that he's probably not a content expert in planting trees and shrubs, contacted uh, our content expert, the expert in the community, uh, who could be able to put some some substance behind Ken's idea, and that's Peter Mezzin. You can, you go ahead. So, so what does Peter do? He understands trees, plants, whatever there he needs to understand in terms of that project. But he knew he needed a visual. He needed a concept that he could work with. So he picks up the phone, calls Scott Richardson at the chamber, and you see the the the, the resulting artwork, which became so almost, almost the, the moving force behind the particular project. So Scott does a lot in the community, and his firm does a lot. But that brings the idea to life, and it helped in terms of marketing the program. That's Scott Richardson. sat around thinking about the idea they realized they were on a roadway okay what do we do with that this is a, this is a private organization the chamber is so one of the next smart things that they did is they brought in again the expert in terms of roads uh, in, in, in the community to give them some advice and how do we move the project forward and I don't think you can underestimate the role that the community the, the, the town officials and particularly DPW played in this particular project uh, and they brought, they got a hold of John Westerling, and John then was able to bring in the Department of Transportation, the State Department of Transportation, which really began to move the project along. So thank you. <laughs> All well and good, great ideas. Somebody had to fund it because uh, Peter and Ken's original idea was this would be a privately funded uh, project. So they had to reach out uh, to the community. And there are several people, Paul Mastriani among them, and others who stepped up with major in-kind contributions, but it does take some cash. Uh, and one of, the new, one of our new uh, neighbors in the community, Unibank, stepped up, thanks in large part to Doris Hamburger, and they contributed in cash $25,000. That's a big deal. <laughs> Project's moving along, got stuck a little bit, needed a little boost. Up steps Finn Perry. Again, a guy who's contributed a lot to the community. But the project was sort of, you would agree, Peter, was 
it was kind of moving along. I wasn't but doing anything. Nah, with it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't doing it. But Finn, Finn uh, applied the pleasant pressure to move the project <laughs> to move the project forward. So thank you, Finn. Thank you, Unibank, for that twenty-five thousand. But we needed more. Somebody has got to step up and do the, the hard work of raising funds. Because somebody's got to ask. Somebody's got to go out and do that. And uh, it was really fascinating because there's a, a member of the community that found, got interested in the project and did the hard work, started to contact people. Uh, and I'd like to thank Jeff Barnes. Where is Jeff? For doing that. He brought, he brought the fundraising home. So thank you for listening to that, but it's important because that formula and the follow through, and now to this, I was joking before, I've never been to a ribbon cutting ceremony with, with a bow in the middle, <laughs> but that's what happens when you have marketing people from Unibank here. And also this, if you look around and take a second to look around, this is a really high quality group uh, and the, the attention to detail that went into this little ribbon cutting are terrific. And Darlene Hayes and Doris had a huge hand to play in that. Thank you. And don't leave, and, and before we cut this cake over here, uh, where's Kate? Kate O'Connell, new to Hopkinton. I was, I, I was told she moved here because of love. We could talk about her, about that later privately. <laughs> but this is first rate. I mean, this is, this is a world-class event planner who's now moved to Hopkinton and you can see her work. So thank you very much for that. So now on to the important people. Uh, I told you a little bit about the person that stepped up that started to drive the project based on Ken's original uh, thoughts. And we'd like to have Peter Mezit come up, the president of Western Nurseries, to talk a little bit about his involvement in the project. Thanks, Tim, and thanks a lot of the people that really made a big difference, and Finn Perry in particular coming in. Last fall, we really fast-tracked it, much in part because of his efforts there. It just made an unbelievable difference. He's got a very nice way about himself, and I really enjoyed working with Finn. Um, Paul Mastriani couldn't be here today. He's, I guess he went to game seven. He has a two-day hangover or something, but he's... He's, uh, he flew in really late last night, but he says thank you to everybody. He wishes he was here. He couldn't make it. Um, I do want to thank also on the committee Scott Richardson. This picture right here did it. Right here. This picture speaks a thousand words, and when we took this around, the checkbook books came out shortly afterwards. It really made a big difference. So, Scott, that, that's invaluable. But while you're saying that, I, sorry to interrupt, but I do want to thank Steve Lewis and Jessica White because I, I don't want to take the credit, because I did not create this, they did, so. Uh, John Westerling, yeah, absolutely huge. Uh, this was a DOT project. We had to deal with the state. Uh, he got the permit early on, and then later on when we ran into some issues with signage uh, that we had promised everybody, possibly not happening, John and Carolyn, really stepped up to the plate and set up a meeting with DOT. I think it's awesome that you showed up, Carolyn. I didn't know if it was going to be you or one of your people. She's hands-on, and that really made a difference. We found a way to get the signage back, so the signage will be coming soon. So, sort of what, like you see in this picture, depicted with individual signs along the way. I think it'll be a classy look to go with a classy landscape. Um, and then Jeff Barnes, yeah, came out of nowhere. I mean, for you to make that aggressive sales pitch call, it's like, wasn't in my nature because I probably didn't have enough time trying to run a nursery. And Finn, you know, he's so nice, he doesn't want to bug people too much. Jeff did that work and it made a big difference. So thank you again, Jeff. Um, the donors, um, Paul Mastriani really, really, really stepped up. I don't know what he paid these guys to do this work, but he handled all the connections to the 10 inch main and all the water that is so crucial to the long term beauty of this project. Uh, all that water is in place thanks, thanks to Paul Mastriani. And Unibank's contribution of $25,000 is going to go a long way to maintaining this for many years to come. We're not done yet. It's not going to look like that for a few years. We're going to make sure it gets to look like that. That's, that's about three years down the road. Uh, Select Energy wrote a big check also for $10,000 to fund this project. Uh, Rosado Landscaping for $10,000. And Perkin Elm right across the street for $10,000. So I, I just want to give those 
companies, especially one. And there's many, many more who donated 500, 1,000, 25 bucks. You know, I see Phipps Insurance, Rob Phipps is here. I can't name them all. Uh, they're all on the handout, so be sure to pat those guys on the back as well, right up here on the sign. Um, I also want to thank uh, the selectmen for promoting this, you know, on your cameras and Norm for supporting it. Of course he supported it, didn't cost the taxpayers any money, but he, he promoted it as well. So thank you to the selectmen and, and the uh, town manager for getting behind it right from the get-go. And the positive media coverage. Sarah, Sarah donated $1,000 out of her own pocket. She deserves a round of applause too. <laughs> it was? <laughs> He's sneaky. Um, one of the best ex this is one of the best examples of how a privately funded initiative, uh, bringing businesses to better together through the chamber, could really make a difference in town. I see this whole area is just rapidly becoming beautiful. You know, with the landscape we're standing in right now, these businesses want to be here. It's a beautiful development. This median strip says you're coming to Hopkinton. It's the gateway to the community. It says something about your community. It says we're a community that is a high quality community. Don't try to steal things here. Don't litter here. Uh, it says it's good for the environment, but it's especially good for the econo economy locally right around here. I think everybody's gonna enjoy it, whether they're coming home from their commute to Boston or they work on South Street. And I think it will have quite a ripple effect. And I think down the road, we can talk about more things right around this area, very similar to what we did. Um, the project was definitely a success. It came in on budget, which is very rare. Maybe a little over, but not way over. Uh, there is money left for maintenance. There's probably gonna be about $40,000 left. This costs seven or $8,000 a year to maintain, so we'll have at least four years. And we're talking about lighting. We actually put in a conduit along with the, along with the irrigation all the way down the 1,400 foot stretch so that we can easily put in lighting someday. So we may use some of that money for that once this fills in. So um, the signage I mentioned is coming and we should see that hopefully within the next month or two and that will recognize the, the major contributors. We also are gonna recognize some of the middle or lower level contributors with I think a nice display in the town hall somewhere that we're talking to Norm about too. Uh, and many people have asked me about the other areas around there so we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. Um, again, thank you everybody, and I really enjoyed working with, with all of you, so thank you again. <laughs> Scott Richardson, President of the Chamber of Commerce, will speak next. So, um, <laughs> well, there's not really much more for me to add, because I think everybody has, uh, has been thanked. Uh, again, this is a real, was a real team effort. Uh, as Peter said, it kind of got off to a, a good start, and then kind of, where are we going? Who's going to who's going to uh, step up to the plate to contribute? Who's uh, who's going to do all the you know kind of the back of the house work? But we had a great team. Uh, the community really came forward to support it. And uh, again, thank you all for uh, being here. Thank you all those of you who did support this. And again, it's not too late to write a check because, as Peter said, we need a maintenance fund to really make this successful. So again, on behalf of the chamber, uh, thank you, Peter, for your uh, incredible diligence and your hard work, because Peter was out there planting most of these, or at least half of them, anyway. I drove by one day, and he's out there, and I said, Peter, I'd like to help you, but you know, I'm, just, I'm just not dressed for it. So, yeah, yeah, so. Anyway, uh, a lot of hard work, and again, really, it's a huge improvement as you come into town. Even looking down from, as you go by on 495, you look down, and it's just, uh, it's very impressive. So, again, thank you. Um, so, uh, Brian, are you up I next? I think it's Doris. Doris, okay. Uh, so, again, we have a leadership contribution from uh, Unibank, who really, even before they moved into town, has contributed to so many causes in this town. It's, it's actually incredible. Uh, so, Doris Hamburger, uh, I'd like to have her come forward and uh, say a few words. Well, good morning. and a member of the new business community here in Hopkinton. I am just amazed at the warm welcome we've received since we've come to town. Um, and I am amazed at the work that everybody did to make this gateway green beautification project happen. 
Um, Unibank sponsorship um, for this project I think is an example of the um, dedication and the commitment to, to support the local causes in the towns that we serve. Um, and on a personal note, um, I am proud to say that Unibank is my hometown. Uh, although I don't live here any longer, I do pass by Gateway Green on my commute to work every day. And I have to say that it puts a smile on my face every morning when I come to work. What a great day to start your day. And what a, what a welcome to this beautiful town of Hopkinton uh, as you enter town. Um, so kudos to everyone involved and thank you for this beautification project that um, is a lovely addition to the town of Hopkinton. Thank you. I'm going to save you to last on that. I mentioned the Department of Transportation. I think, Norman, you'll, you'll agree with this, that uh, to cut through and get to the right people at various state departments takes um, a plugged-in state representative, um, someone who will pick up the, not, not just answer the call, but do something about the calls. And we, we really are, I say this all the time, but uh, we're pretty fortunate to have a state senator and a state representative that are that understand what's happening in the community and work at that. Uh, so I, I I think it's important that we hear from the person who plugged us into this the the, the uh, Commonwealth Department of Transportation, and I tease her by saying um, she is my favorite step re state representative. But I think you will agree she's our favorite step yes. state representative. And as I remind him, I am his only state representative as well, but that's okay. I'm really uh, proud, proud to be one and, and proud to be here. One of the things I love about representing Hopkinton is the fact that it is a community in a very real sense. And I think what you see in this area here, if you remember driving through here 10 years ago, what an amazing difference in what's gone on here. And that is because of a couple of things. One is incredible vision by a lot of the people who have already been recognized here today. Uh, I also want to recognize the community, the town, obviously. Um, I had said to the planning board earlier, you know, the planning board is sometimes kind of behind the scenes, but as a planning board member and having known how kind of how that process works um, in realizing a vision, it's so important. You know, obviously Norman and his leadership, John, uh, everyone here, but, but the most remarkable thing is that uh, everything came together and all of the skill sets, all of the expertise, really the best of Hawkington came together to make it happen and here it is. And I, I want to echo some of Peter's comments about the ripple effect something like this area has on the whole community. Um, it says a lot about how proud Hawkington is of its own community, of what we've been able to do here. The fact that the businesses are involved um, and have actively engaged in the community. This is the type of um, synergies and relationships that can not only achieve something like this but really can achieve anything as far as I'm concerned so this is just um, one incredible project that's a step to more and greater things as far as I'm concerned in Hopkinton and anyone who gets off of 495 whether it be anyone who lives here uh, anyone who visits here um, knows uh, what this community has to offer know that we have an incredible investment in this community and we're really proud of who we are so it's just great to be a part of this I did um, very little on this but I get the benefit I guess of being able to cut the ribbon on this incredible project and to be able to patronize some of these great local businesses so thanks to everyone involved and, and just uh, proud to be here The um, Board of Selectmen in Hopkinton uh, periodically takes a fair amount of heat. Uh, they're right in the, in, the, in the center of what's happening in, uh, in Hopkinton. We're, uh, I use the word fortunate, I don't use it uh, in a cavalier manner, but we're fortunate because uh, we have a, a group of very quality people on the, on the Board of Selectmen. We're also fortunate to have a chairman who's effective. Uh, he's good at being a chairman. In addition to being a good chairman, he's a good guy. Uh, and I'm glad he's here this morning uh, and that he could take some time from, from his schedule to be with us. 
And, I, and that's uh, Brian Hurd, the chairman of the Hopkins Board of Selectmen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I just want to add on to a couple of things that have been said already. Much has been said, and many of the thank yous are out there. But, uh, real quick, uh, my twin, Ken Driscoll over here, uh, thought about this when he served on the Parks and Rec Commission. Ken, thank you for thinking it up. Uh, Ken has longer hair than I right now, but if you confuse us, that's okay. If you've got complaints about the Board of Selectmen, please direct them to Ken Driscoll. Uh, Finn Perry, always pleasantly persistent, uh, always persistent and always pleasant in how he does things. Uh, Finn, thank you for your leadership on this project and helping us get to where we are today. Uh, Mr. Kamalo, as always, thank you for your dedication and support uh, to the town of Hopkinton. You do a fantastic job. We are lucky and thrilled to have you on the team, and uh, I love working with you. Uh, if you watch the meetings, he and I tend to fight on occasion, but it's always healthy, it's always respectful, and it's always with the best interest of Hopkinton in mind, and he does a great job as our town manager, and I really would take a minute to thank him. I also want to weigh in on State Representative Dykema. I think somebody said we're fortunate to have State Representative Dykema represent us in Boston. We are extremely fortunate to have State Representative Dykema represent us in Boston on Beacon Hill. Uh, I had uh, the pleasure, I guess is the term you can use, of knowing a lot of folks down on Beacon Hill. And this is the classiest, most dedicated, intelligent, respectful individual I know on Beacon Hill. And she's, it's a real honor to work with her, too. could not be with us today. She does a fantastic job on behalf of the community too. You know, as the chair of the Board of Selectmen, um, I'm one of three here today. My colleagues, Brendan Tedstone, newly elected, Brendan Tedstone and Claire Wright are here with us today. Our other two colleagues are traveling on vacation uh, or business this week, uh, but we are just five. And there are 16,000 going towards 17,000 residents in Hopkinton today. And we represent them. And on behalf of all the residents, all 17,000 residents of Hopkinton, a big thank you to everybody who made this happen. It's a great testament, this strip of roadway now, I call it the new boulevard in Hopkinton. We now have a boulevard. But this strip of roadway here is a great testament and a vision, daily reminder to all of us what happens when we work together. And the 17,000 people of Hopkinton appreciate all that you've done here, to all the people who are here today. We appreciate all that you've done and the 17,000 people of Hopkinton recognize what public and private partnerships can do for our community to move forward. So on behalf of all of them, thank you very much. I'm just thinking out loud here. Perhaps we could name it Volunteer Way or something along those lines, something that recognizes the public-private partnership and something that recognizes how important volunteers are to our community and how it makes us all move forward every day together. Thanks again for coming today and uh, look forward to the ribbon cutting ceremony. Thank you. Always eager for the microphone. No, I just uh, I was very remiss in not recognizing Mascot um, for the role that they played. Um, someone was going to be here from Mascot. Is anyone here from Mascot? There he was working. Yeah, um, they were going to try and send someone. Um, they were incredibly uh, responsive and flexible in getting this project done, um, which was you know incredibly meaningful I think for the town and for all of us who uh, really wanted to see this vision come together. In my view, that one of the most exciting things about my job is being able to um, kind of clear the way for these types of projects to happen. You know, our government is intended um, to be part of the solution um, and not intended intended to sort of um, hold up important projects like this in the community. So that's one of the exciting parts of my role that I played, and I was really thrilled um, that MassDOT sort of has a similar vision and really went uh, out of their way, and I think hopefully continues to uh, work to get some of the final details put in place. But uh, again, I, w I was hoping they would be here and I want to give them an important recognition. Thank you. Thank you. Bef before we do a little ribbon cutting, thank you's been s said eh, 50 times, but thank you all for being here. Uh, let me just reiterate, if you just take a second and look around at this crowd, this is this is a quality group of people and I think they, they, they not only they represent Hopkinton. This is a good community on its way to being a great community, and this is and, and these people are part of the part of the part of the reason that that's going to happen. So, if we can have you up front, and you're all welcome to stay, please. We want you to stay and, and sample this 
world-class cake. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome back to HCAM News. You can see a whole lot more about the Gateway Green Project on our website, HCAM.TV. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. And to tell you more, here is Courtney Taylor with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, July 1st at 8 p.m., Arelli Biggers and Abby Newman discuss their cooking endeavors on Hopkinton Coffee Break. On Monday, July 4th at 7 p.m., Martha Collins reads her poetry dealing with issues of racism on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. At 8.30 p.m., the health risks that men face will be discussed on Physician Focus. On Tuesday, July 5th at 6.30 p.m., Maria Flannery discusses being an organ donor recipient, and Jennifer Cray shares how Donate Life helps those in need of transplants on a new HCAM News Focus. At 7 p.m., Night Rhythm performs in the HCA Summer Kickoff Concert. On Wednesday, July 6th at 8 p.m., Lauren DeBow looks back on memorable moments and discusses the new school year on All About Hopkinton. On Thursday, July 7th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. Summer may be here, but HCAM is not on vacation. You can see what we're doing by visiting hcam.tv connect and signing up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. And if you want to know about events in town, you can sign up for our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Corny. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, HCAM.TV, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. For everyone here at HCAM, happy Independence Day week, and thanks for watching HCAM. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at BlackstoneValleyWealth.com.